Good afternoon, this is Ben Caton with Clarity Farms Grazing 365 coming to you from Central Arkansas. It is uh, Saturday, the day before Mother's Day, and uh, I just got back into town. Uh, my stepdaughter graduated from the University of Arkansas yesterday with a 4.0 in animal science, and we'll start, uh, start veterinary, veterinarian school in uh, this fall at LSU. And uh, so her mother is very proud, rightfully so, as is her father and her stepdad. Um, so the day and a half I was gone, I gave them what I thought would be just the right amount. And uh, I guess me and blind squirrels are right every so often because they nailed this perfectly. Um, you know, anytime you give them that much of a of a paddock at one time you're not going to get the 90 or 95 percent harvest efficiency but i'd say we got 75 or 80 percent in here and look at the manure i mean that's exciting you know all of this fertility we're putting down the next time we come through this paddock it's just going to be a little healthier and we'll graze it again drop this much manure and then time after you know we come to it after that it'll just be a little bit healthier um, one thing I have noticed, so, you know, we're at that time of the year and, uh, I, I really want to hit on this and one other thing that are connected today. Uh, this is a time of the year where you really want to be watching those manure pads because we're transitioning from cool season grasses to warm season grasses. I've been talking about that for the last few videos. I don't mean to belabor the point, but this is a pretty important transition. You know, we tend to fixate on watching manure in the spring and winter. You know, spring to make sure they're not too runny, winter to make sure they're not stacking up too much. But when you make, uh, when you're making that transition from spring to summer, and uh, even though the calendar says it's spring, uh, the weather's starting to tell us, hey, so far, uh, it looks like we may have a little bit of an early summer. You know, we're well into the 80s, have some high humidity. We've been fortunate to have a lot of rain. Uh, but if you look at what they're grazing right now, this paddock, that, and this was their first move of the day. You know, I just got here in the afternoon. So uh, an early afternoon move after grazing this for a day and a half. And we've got very mature, cool season grass in here. And we need to watch it and make sure that their manure doesn't start to stack up. Um, and I found a few pats in here. Most of them look pretty good, but I do have a few starting to stack up and there's nothing in here that's runny. Uh, so that tells me, you know, we've got the protein about right, but a few animals probably didn't get quite the amount of protein they needed to process the mature forage. So uh, that's one of the things you need to be looking for this time of year or whenever that transition happens in your, in your environment. You know, I'm sure further north, you, you don't have any warm seasons coming in yet. And further south, you're thinking, cool seasons? What cool seasons? Uh, one thing I look for, you know, in, in addition to the manure pats, is when I put them into a fresh paddock, what are they going for first? Are they going for energy or are they going for protein? You know, they're selective grazers. You know, I think it was Joel Salatin who says, uh, you know, cows like a five-year-old at a buffet. You turn them loose, what's the first thing they go for? The desserts. Well, you know, no matter how tight you pack them in, their first bites are always going to be their most desirable bites. And... I like to watch them and see, all right, are they going for protein or are they going for energy? You know, it takes protein to process the energy. What are they lacking? Because that's what they're going to come out and compete for first. And let me show you. Um, this spring, when we had all the protein we wanted, they, uh, they, they ate clover, but they weren't all that interested in clover. So when they got into this paddock, there was a batch of clover right here in this corner and they made a beeline for it. So clover, in addition to, be a nitrogen, uh, to being a nitrogen fixer, is also a great protein source. And they laid the whammy 
on that clover as soon as they got into this paddock, which is really remarkable to me because this is only their second time ever in this paddock. And the fact that they knew right where that clover is just tells you uh, they're a lot smarter, I think, than we give them credit for. And their collective herd memory, I think, is uh, something we tend to underestimate. I've noticed the longer I have animals on a farm, the, the more they know the rotation and know where that next paddock's going to be. But they came in today and laid a whammy on the protein first. And if, if they were getting enough protein, the first thing they would have come in and taken are these seed heads. So this is a seed head. Some people call this cheat grass, smooth brome. Um, and they're hitting some seed heads, but they got that protein first. So that tells me we're starting to get to the time of the year where I need to really start watching, making sure we're getting adequate protein. Um, we don't normally supplement this time of year, but uh, if, if you wanna to continue to pack them in and they don't have adequate protein, that's something you're gonna to have to do. If you don't wanna supplement, you're just gonna to have to bite the bullet and allow them to be a little bit more selective so that they can kind of pick and choose a little bit. But we don't ever want them to be selective. Uh, that's, that is counterproductive if your goal is to, uh, if, if your farm's goal, your ranch's goal, is to make the maximum sustainable profit per acre. So, uh, you know, it, it, for us, I'd rather supplement a little protein, though I don't think we're anywhere near that at this point. Now, if these were warm seasons and they were, and they were this mature, we'd be supplementing some protein. But <laughs> hopefully, if these were warm seasons, they wouldn't have been allowed to get that mature because I, I wouldn't, that, that would require me falling asleep at the wheel, which I don't intend to do. But boy, they were ready to move. Had I arrived an hour or two later, we probably, you know, we wouldn't have had any problems, but uh, they, would have, they would have been just bawling when I got here. As soon as they saw me pull up, they would have started bawling. Uh, another thing to watch this time of year is their mineral consumption. What are they going for? Now, we don't do the cafeteria style mineral. Uh, we, we just use um, a single mineral, you know, buy it by the 50 pound bag, put it in a mineral feeder and give them free choice to it. And uh, I tend to use high mag in the spring when things are a little bit more lush. Look at this girl go after that clover. I mean, it's already been grazed once since they've been in this paddock in just the first few minutes they've been in here and she's cleaning it up. She wants that clover. She's about 40% empty. So they were ready for a move. They wouldn't have been able to fill up on today's, uh, on, on the paddock that they were in prior to this move. If I had spent another day out of town on that, uh, they would have gone backwards a little bit. But uh, you want to keep your eye on the mineral also. When it starts to get humid, they tend to, uh, they tend to hit that mineral if, you know, for the salt. If you're not providing salt in addition to the mineral. Um, you know, I'm sure I'll get a lot of comments on this, but we don't, not only do we not do the cafeteria style mineral, we don't do salt. Uh, we just allow them to get their salt through the mineral, which probably means we spend more on our mineral than we need to. Uh, because there's probably times they're eating the mineral when all they really want is salt. But, you know, um, it's just kind of a pain in the butt and I don't want to screw with it. So <laughs> that's, that's why we do it that way. Uh, so, uh, you know, it, yeah, this is one of those situations where, uh, you know, there's, there's the optimal way of doing it and then there's the most pragmatic way to do it. And more often than not, we're going to err on the side of pragmatism. they look really good if you notice they're they're all pretty much done slicking off um, and even though we're in the middle of fly season I mean I think this girl here has you know very reasonable amount of flies on her you know maybe 50 
which may sound like a lot, but that's actually not a lot. You see uh, in the height of fly season, you see some of these animals, uh, especially unadapted animals, they'll just be in the thousands. And I'll never be, it'll never cease to amaze me uh, in a lot of operations, you know, one cow will get covered in flies and instead of getting rid of that one cow, that's the problem, you know, the rancher or farmer will treat the entire herd. It's never made sense to me at all. Uh, get rid of the problem. Don't keep the problem and, and uh, treat all of your animals for something that uh, only one animal is guilty of. You know, the longer I do this, the more I realize we raise our own problems. You know, if you have one that just doesn't want to get with the program, either it doesn't want to mob up, it doesn't want to move, it doesn't want to stay where it's supposed to stay, um, you know, it doesn't have a good personality, doesn't allow you to, to uh, you know, to, to have any contact with its calf, you know, when it comes time to tagging the calf, um, just get rid of it. Don't keep your headaches. They just compound. You know, your headaches will birth new headaches. So, um, I wanted to uh, also take a minute today and thank all of the, uh, all the mothers out there. My own mother, who is very patient with me, and lets me steal my dad several times a week to come out here and, and, and lend me a hand. I want to thank uh, my wife, who has raised two amazing children, my, my, step, my stepchildren. Uh, one, as I said, just graduated from the University of Arkansas, and one uh, is a sophomore, going to be a sophomore at the University of Arkansas. And then to my ex-wife of 25 years, who, uh, who is the mother of my three sons. My oldest son just graduated college uh, this past December. He's an accountant for the, uh, in the corporate headquarters at Dillard's. And uh, I have two 20-year-old twin boys, so I have three sons. And uh, one is starting studying, uh, going to Votech to become an electrician. And the other is working full-time at Lowe's, trying to figure out what his next step in life is going to be. Unfortunately, none of my sons care anything about cattle and ranching. But you know what? When I was 20 or 24 years old, I wouldn't have cared anything about ranching or cattle either. I wish I could get a hold of myself, you know, my 20-year-old version of me and say, don't go to college. Just rent some land, run some cattle on it, get a town job, to pay the bills until, uh, until you can do this full time. I, I can't imagine a better lifestyle. It makes me sad that it took me, I think 46 years at the time, uh, or 40, no, it was 48 years uh, until, I became, start, until I started doing this full time. I'm glad I've I'm glad I've done it. I just wish I'd have done it at a much younger age. College turned out well. I was in the financial world for 25 years, and that went very well. We had our own firm. We sold it to to a, a company that ultimately became Goldman Sachs. And uh, I mean, it, it turned out well. It just wasn't the most rewarding profession. You know, we helped some folks, don't get me wrong, but, you know, if, if all they could write on my tombstone someday is, you know, Ben helped a bunch of people with a lot of money make more money, that's just not a lot of legacy. Uh, I hope what they can put on my tombstone is he did everything he could to heal the soil and heal the planet. That's really my motivation for being out here, and it's my motivation for doing these videos. More people need to be doing it this way, not because we're doing it the right way, but because we're doing it in the way that benefits the soil and ultimately our planet the most. And oh yeah, by the way, it just makes better, healthier food, better for the earth, better for humans to consume. And it's, you know, look at these cattle. I mean, if you were a cow, isn't this where you'd want to be? I would. If I had to come back in the next life as a cow, you know, I wouldn't mind being here on Clarity Farms. Look at that. 
That's a pretty good salad bar to have four times a day, five times a day. So thank you to all the mothers out there. Uh, you, you've certainly, uh, you, you certainly deserve the pat on the back and uh, you deserve more than one day a year. Um, and I want to, so thank you all. I also want to thank all of our subscribers. If you're not a subscriber, please do so. It helps us out a lot. Also, if you haven't uh, liked the video yet, please like the video. That goes a long way uh, towards YouTube recommending this video or in our other videos to folks who, who, haven't, uh, who, who haven't subscribed yet. So please hit that like button. Also, please keep the comments coming. Uh, we get lots of great suggestions, not only on uh, future content, but just suggestions on how to do things a little bit more efficiently and better than we're doing them because we want to be lifetime learners here. And the truth is there's a lot of folks out there doing what we're doing and many of them are doing it better than us. So please keep those comments and suggestions coming. With that, I wish you all a good day. And once again, happy Mother's Day to all you moms.